<laughs> I came outside to read with goat friends and all they want to do is eat my book. So this is my life currently. I'm reading the hating game. I'm 24 pages in. Romeo is here. Reading along. And eating it. <laughs> it's not snack. Stop. Really? Thanks. I can't read because this one won't leave me alone. Huh? What do you want? Good morning everyone. If I sound like I just woke up, I did. I'm gonna put on makeup today and since I'm doing that, I figured while I do that, let's talk about books I've read because it's been a couple days. While I was gone, I finished two books. I first finished my audiobook, Before the Devil Breaks You by Libba Bray. That's the third book in the Diviners series. So the series takes place in the 1920s. I've talked about it so much in this vlog, I feel like I'm repeating myself, but it's like The Great Gatsby meets BuzzFeed Unsolved as far as there's a cast of characters who all live in the 1920s New York era, so they're very diverse, and they all have these powers that make them called the Diviners, and they fight like paranormal demon guys <laughs> and a lot of it is a metaphor for like racism or pla plagiarism <laughs> prejudice at the time the third book just expands on the world and the characters are facing a new conflict the series feels a little disjointed at this point at this point it honestly feels like you could read each book as a standalone because the villain from the previous book has nothing to do with each other and I can't see how they relate I think books three and four are finally going to like connect to each other. The characters are awesome. The writing is amazing. I love how this one brings up a lot of social justice topics and this talks about interracial relationships and asexuality and a ton of really great stuff. I just think it's a masterfully done series that brings up bigger topics than YA would usually approach but it's still done in like a fun way. My only big complaint is that the characters in this book particularly were a little bit strange. Some of the characters went off on like side paths in this book that I thought were so strange and out of character. My favorite character turned into my least favorite character in this book because there was a scene that was just not good. <laughs> this book really heightened the stakes for the characters as well, so I think that was inevitable at some point in the series. I gave the book three stars. It's such a good series and it's so underrated. I mentioned a couple videos ago that I feel like it's one of those books that everyone has seen and everyone has heard of, but no one really knows what it's about and no one really wants to read it, but you really gotta read it. I highly recommend them on audiobook. The characters are my favorite. I would die for Sam Lloyd. It's so good. The next book I finished, you saw me reading in my previous clips. I read The Hating Game by Sally Thorne. So this is the current situation with this book. If you can't tell, I loved it. The Hating Game is about a girl named Lucy who works at a publishing company that recently merged with a different publishing company. She's the assistant to the CEO and there's another person who is assistant to the other CEO from the other company and they work alongside each other. So for months or years or however long they've worked together, they've like hated each other. Other. There's always competition between them. It's all about she and her co-worker Josh having that hate relationship and how obviously it's a romance book. Enemies to lovers. <laughs> I've heard it's good but I'm so picky with romance that I was like if I don't like it whatever. Well, in the beginning there's very little explanation of why they hate each other. You're just kind of thrown into the story and she's like Josh is the worst. Josh is so annoying. I want to pluck my eyes out with a fork. Josh is so bad and he's literally just sitting at his desk doing nothing. So it was kind of hard to place why she was feeling the way that she was because we've got little explanation behind it. This book is told in a very like witty, funny style, which typically I'm not a fan of. Like if you watch my channel, you know that books that are like, oh my god, his abs are like my least favorite type of genre. And sometimes with that humorous writing style, she would make a joke that went a little too far. Like there's a couple of times where she uses the slur gypsy. She didn't say something was retarded, but she used the word retarded and just it would take jokes like that that were distasteful. Every time I would see it, I would stop it in my head, go, ooh, that wasn't great and that would happen every few pages. I gotta finish this eyebrow pour. We can talk about it, hold on. As far as like the romance scenes in this, <sighs> new favorite of all time, take notes. Cause here's the thing, I'm a slut for soft characters. Eye contact 
is so much hotter than sex to me. Maybe that makes me a normal female human, but that's just the way I feel. The author would write like pages of soft interactions, like hand holding or like back rubbing. Something so minuscule that normal authors are just like, he touched my hand and then they roll over it. But this book, it would expound like the feeling of their hands that are twined. It sounds so boring when I put it that way, but it's so sweet. And that's like the parts that I crave in books and I want to read about. Can't recommend it enough because of that. Usually whenever characters are sarcastic or they're trying to make like a witty inner narrative, I'm like, shut up. But this does it. So I don't know what Sally Thorne did. I don't know what code she cracked, but I'm a fan. Even though it wasn't perfect, it's one of the best romances that I've ever read. It goes on the list of healthy stuff. <laughs> there's a couple of questionable moments with the romance as far as there's like this weird love triangle at one point and the both guys are super protective of her. There's like a scene where she's talking on the phone with one guy and the other like grabs her phone and hangs up for her, which I think, I mean, it's not out of the ballpark to call that abusive, but there's instances like that, but they don't color the entire story, which is how I'm able to give it such a high rating. I don't know why I feel like I have to justify myself, but that's where I stand with it. I gave it four and a half stars. We're not gonna talk about the eyeliner, but it happened. It's been so long since I've read a romance that wasn't just like, oh, okay, it's cute. Like most romance, like I deal with it, but this one, I was actively like so excited about it. It was so adorable and I kept screenshotting parts of it and like sending it to my friends. It's the first time I've like loved a romance story in a while since Restore Me, so. <laughs> was it a romance though? Was Restore Me romance? Can I just state an unpopular opinion? They're Real by Benefit used to be my favorite mascara of all time, but look how clumpy it is now. Girl, what happened? So I really want to start Brightway Burn because that's my highly anticipated conclusion to the Conqueror's Saga. I can't wait to find out what happens, but since it's a historical fiction series, you kind of have to know what happens in previous books and remember characters because there's lots of political drama. You can already guess my dilemma. I remember nothing. So I'm kind of having to backtrack through the other books and like fit in names of people and see who the heck is who the heck. And that's slow going. I also started a graphic novel called Be Prepared by Vera Broskel. She's the author of Anya's Ghost and this is a book about a Russian main character living in America. She's kind of having a hard time assimilating and making friends because her family is so weird and Russian and she just wants to be a normal American. She hears about a summer camp that's all for Russian kids and she's like, oh my gosh, no one's gonna make fun of me. I'm gonna go, I'll be fun. It turns out being a really weird camp for people who are like so full-blooded Russian and she's Russian American now and that's really funny and cute so far I think I'm gonna give that like three and a half or four stars and I'm also trying to finish up Burial Rites by Hannah Kent which I've been reading for months like seriously back when I was at college I was still working on this it's a literary fiction book about a woman in Iceland who's accused of murder I'm gonna frame you for murder you're gonna go to jail and I have that one audiobook so I could try and listen to it in audiobook but it'd be the same speed as I were reading it it's just so dense in how packed with imagery it is and it's beautiful but it's just taking a long time to get through my new camera is coming in the mail today so Next time I talk to you, we'll be in HD. Hello, hello, hello. I'm gonna be one of those people that looks up here now instead of at the camera, but I'll try my best. It's gonna be so rad not having to edit all my sound on my computer because iPhone recording quality is garbage. Hi everyone. So I got the Canon G7X Mark II, which means I'm officially a basic vlogger. So I finished a book, <laughs> killing it this week. Be prepared by Vera Broskel. I think I mentioned this previously as I got ready today. This is a semi-autobiography graphical graphic novel about Vera. It's really hard to wow me with graphic novels and this just kind of fell into the category of stuff that was fun to read, it was easy to read, but it wasn't particularly smashing. <laughs> it's just a solid 
three star book. There's nothing great about it. There's nothing terrible about it. There was a Russian character named Lena, so, so that brought back some memories, but I ignored it. For the rest of my day, I think I'm just going to listen to an audiobook. I'm currently listening to Burial Rites by Hannah Kent. It's going good. It's going slow, like I said. Today is Thursday, and I start my internship on Monday, so we're going to have to start slowing down on reading. I doubt I'm going to do as much, or maybe I will do more. Who knows? I'm going to see if the cat's over here. Hi, Miss Mel. Is this your home? Miss Mel. She was asleep. <laughs> I just went to the post office. I'm expecting books, but I don't remember what I'm expecting. Like I said, I did trades. This I know for a fact is not a book, so I'll open this one first. Either someone ordered something for me or I did a trade and forgot to tell them. Let's find out. <sighs> Got it. Oh! Oh, okay, I remember this. Cool. Okay, so this is a trade I did. The book that I have is The Year We Fell Down by Serena Bowen, which is a new adult book. One of my favorite series of all time is Easy by Tamara Weber, and one day I tweeted her, hey, I love your books. It's the only healthy romance I've been able to find. What's a book you recommend that is kind of similar to this? Her response was this book. I know very little about it other than it's about hockey players. I'm usually not into sports romance, but if Tamara Weber said it's good, then it must be good. So now I have a physical copy. I'm definitely adding this to my summer TBR because I need some cute romances. This is an order from Depop. Depop is an app. I have a Depop shop for my books. You can go check out the books I'm selling. As one does when one has an account as a seller, I also used it as a shopper. I've never had a jean skirt before. I figure why not try it now? I'm gonna try this on with a different shirt and I'll do a little modeling. Okay, so it fits. I feel like I want it to be higher waisted, but if I do that, then the slit in the back is literally up to my ass. I'm too tall for this skirt is the problem. Is it cute though? Leave a comment down below. I have a book haul for you for like one thing. This has got to be from a trade that I don't remember. <laughs> what did I get? <gasps> I remember what I got. Can you guess what it is based on the back of the book? I traded Shannon for a copy of Truth Witch. The way that I came to own this is strange because this is a book I told myself I'm never going to read. I know this had hype on booktube a couple, was it years ago? I don't know. I don't enjoy books about witches. <laughs> That's one of my things on my list that I can't do it. Witches, pirates, mermaids, for some reason just doesn't interest me. Until <laughs> my best friend Bonnie just recently read this book and she was reviewing it and saying the female friendship in it was so good and the characters were so interesting and the plot was interesting and I trust Bonnie with my life so who's to say that I'm not gonna enjoy this? <laughs> Bonnie and I have such similar tastes as far as what types of characters we enjoy in the writing styles. We'll see if it's actually as good as she says it is. <laughs> no pressure, Bonnie. But yeah, I'll link her vlog where she talks about this down below. I should be asleep. It's 5 a.m. But I just want an update before I go to bed. Still reading burial rights. I'm on page 172. I'm obsessed with this camera. I can't stop vlogging. So I had to do some errands. <laughs> errands. Uh, I wish. But I have another book from Amazon. It's super thin and tiny. Don't know what it is. Uh, let's find out. Oh, they're from Sasha. So I didn't know Sasha was getting me something. I love her. She got me both of Chimamanda to go see DGA's tiny small books. We Should All Be Feminists and Dear Ijuela or A Feminist Manifesto and 15 Suggestions. I'm sweating. I'm sorry. I have read both of these and I love them and these are going on my feminist shelf immediately. I adore them. I highly recommend them. This one is all about why we should be feminists. It's a very basic introduction to the idea of feminism but it's very well-rounded and thought-provoking and this is about a mother who is raising a daughter who wanted advice on how to raise a good feminist daughter and it's all about teaching a girl how to be strong. It's so beautiful. I love both of these. Thank you so much, Sasha. You're so sweet. So now I have both of these and I'm so happy. I've not read it all today, so maybe I should get on that. This clip is gonna be a mess because I look like a mess. The fan's on, you can probably hear the wind. I've had like four hours of sleep. I don't know why I didn't vlog this, but it just went over my head. I got an arc 
of Tata Mafi's new book last night. The e arcs went up on Edelweiss. I screamed when it came to my Kindle. If you don't know, the book is called A Very Large Expanse of Sea. This is her own voices contemporary novel about a Muslim girl living in America in 2002 after 9-11 has happened. It's very autobiographical. It mirrors Tata's life where she moved around a lot and she faced a lot of bigotry and xenophobia and racism because she wore a headscarf. And this book just delves into all the different issues that Shireen has to navigate through as she goes to a new school and she starts meeting people and the prejudices start to come out. Particularly this book starts to focus on this bond relationship she forms with one of her classmates named Ocean who is a white upper class heterosexual white boy. She has to come to terms with her feelings of understanding her worth I suppose. So this book follows Shireen and Ocean's relationship kind of but also it's very family based because she and her brother are both into break dancing and she wants to learn break dance with him and his friends. I I'm not kidding you when I say I have not read a book in one sitting since high school. Maybe not even in high school. I couldn't put this down. I cried probably 10 times throughout it. I'm probably gonna get in trouble for showing you the pages of this book, but I highlighted so much throughout the first few chapters. Every other line I was like, yes. <laughs> this book is so honest and so true to Tata's experiences and Shireen's experiences. It talks about feminism and the choice to wear the headscarf and feeling out of place in America because people are so racist to her. It talks about acceptance and privilege and it's so good. This book is full of powerful moments and I absolutely adore Shireen as a main character. Her anger is so fully justified and just beautiful to read about on the page and I love her transformation of character and it makes it so that the issues I have with it are kind of secondary to the story and the characters. I gave this book four stars because I did have issues with it but I almost want to withhold my rating until I read the physical finished copy of it because all the issues that I had with it are things that are easily able to be edited out. This book is so different than Shatter Me and Furthermore because it is contemporary and it takes on a new writing style style. For the style of story, it really worked. But there were times where I feel like the writing could be too explainy and not showing enough and it would fall into like this passive narrative where she's just explaining things that have happened to her rather than flushing that out. I had a little bit of an issue with the ending and it has nothing to do with Shireen's transformation or like the resolution of the book but there's just like details. I guess this would have to go in a spoilery review for me to talk about it but there's details about the ending that just rubbed me the wrong way. Like I said, everything that I have to criticize about this book is far less important than the lasting message it gives off. I cannot wait until this book comes out and I cannot wait until Muslim reviewers get their hands on it and finally get to read something that speaks so truthfully to Tahra's experiences as a Muslim woman. It's just, it's so much to unpack. I'm definitely going to be rereading this and once again, take my rating with a grain of salt because there's probably things that are going to be fixed in the final version. Oh man, that book was so good. I literally got to pages where I would highlight the entire page just because it was so so impactful. The relationship between Ocean and Shireen was equal parts beautiful and cute and amazing but also the relationship reveals so much about insecurities that women of color have dating interracially. Obviously I cannot relate at all to the magnitude of experiences that Shireen has had but this book put me in her shoes and left me speechless like the amount of sympathy I have for this character and like how much of a cheerleader I was for her throughout the entire book and I wanted her to realize her worth and I wanted her to defeat these racist awful people in her town by this book order it from your library, tell people to have it, buy it for your friends, pre-order it today. So now that I've spent a whole 10 minutes talking about it, it's Sunday, I start my job on Tuesday. I am overcome with anxiety about this ordeal. So I think I'm gonna try and chill, listen to my audiobook, even though my audiobook is about murder and anxiety inducing things. <laughs> my arm hurts, I just wanted to update you that I read that book and you need to hop on it. So since I start my job soon, I think I'm gonna end this vlog here. It's a very positive note to end on, me having read a new Tahadamafi book. <laughs> Thank you everyone for watching. I'll stop blabbering on and just cut to a clip of me playing ukulele. It's you, it's you, it's all for you. Everything I do, I just
tell you all the time Heaven is a place on earth with you Tell me all the things you wanna do I heard that you like the bad girls, honey Is that true? It's better than I ever even knew They say that the world was built for two Only worth living if somebody Is loving you Baby, now you do